hope you all are having a absolutely wonderful week and an even I hope you have an even better weekend. Sorry, it's crappy weather and the second I hooked you guys up the display um, little display holder started wobbling so it was like ah super distracting. But anyway, um, I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. I wanted to do a little update video since um, my nonprofit rescue had to kind of be put on hold with everything going on legally. Um, but we still got 501c3 approved, so it's really exciting. Um, and I wanted to make a little short video about five mistakes that I'm seeing regularly um, that people make when taking care of amphibians and reptiles. Um, this is not at all a hate video, it's just kind of cheap, quick advice on simple, easy to fix mistakes. Um, so I wanted to quick do a video on that. And right now we have um, five species of geckos, we've got about 15 um, fancy morphs of ball pythons. I've been working really hard to get some good breeders to keep with that. Um, about four corn snakes, three king snakes, a hybrid snake, a bunch of uh, bearded dragons and frogs and toads, long-tailed lizards, just a lot of really nice animals. So I couldn't be more excited and more happy. We have the groups that we keep, which is um, about 25, a little over 25 snakes, um, a bunch of geckos that we use for educa educational shows, and then um, five frogs, two toads, four long tails, and then um, four bearded dragons, as well as two um, Central American banded geckos and another specialty banded gecko I'll introduce to you guys pretty soon. But I wanted to just go through, since those are like our keepers, and then we have now a very new, nice, updated area for our rescues that we take in and rehabilitate, and some that are really, really, really not in the best situation or that we absolutely have the room for to let beco them become permanent residents here, um, we will keep, but everybody, there is a good amount, and the majority of everyone else is rehabilitated and rescued and then sent to a wonderful forever home, if they don't have a forever home with us, so it's really nice. We've had a really, really good group of guys that ended up having really special needs because of some easy mistakes to fix. So I just wanted to quick pop on here and do a fun lighthearted video. I'm going to do a more detailed video very soon about, um, about care and husbandry for baby ball pythons, hatchlings, things like that. But right now I just wanted to do a really simple update video on the five things I've noticed that are easy to fix common little mistakes when housing and taking care of reptiles. By far the number one, we're starting number one with this because it's by landslide what I see the most, is people thinking because snakes can eat once a week, sometimes once every two weeks when they're older, fully grown snakes, um, old adult ball pythons can go, you know, twice a month only with eating, um, depending on your snake. Most of mine are pigs and they eat weekly, but it just depends on the snake. Some are picky, some were raised that way, whatever. Um, but the biggest mistake is because reptiles don't eat as often, people assume, oh, I can feed all of my reptiles once a week and they'll be fine. And I've seen this time and time and time again where people just go to feed their reptiles once a week and they don't separate it at all. They don't in any way, shape, or form look up what that animal would need and then sadly a lot of times they feed something like a lot of bearded dragons they have a diverse diet so they'll feed them one different thing each week whereas it's good to keep greens around all the time with calcium on it and then feed them you know every other day every three days if they're malnourished and you really really need to get back into a good care feed them dubias feed them um crickets whatever uh, occasionally hornworms, but they're really fatty, so not constantly. It's good to have a diverse diet, but don't just feed them greens if you're feeding, especially only once a week. And so many people then don't bother to put calcium on anything, and they're eating way too little for a bearded dragon, and we get metabolic bone disease all of the time. We see it all the time here, and it's just not fair. Another thing <laughs> is when people get bearded dragons, keep them together, that's a lot of times they're fine and happy together, but a lot of times you get unwanted, unwanted babies, and people think, oh well, 
I can hatch, you know, keep a few hatchlings and breed just, I've got pretty bearded dragons, why not? And then they keep not close enough of an eye on their hatchlings and they get their toes chewed off and their tails bit off and they just end up sometimes with injuries so severe and so bad that it is a lifelong effect. Um, two of the bearded dragons we have in are just are situations like that where there's no way I could ever adopt them out, even if it was just somebody a reputable rescue because they're just really, really difficult cases. So that's the next issue I see, especially with bearded dragons, is people, issue number two would be people keeping hatchlings together without keeping a watch on it and then somebody's getting picked on. Um, and that's if you keep constant greenery around you, feed often, feed every day, like small crickets, don't overfeed, but calcium coated crickets, just keep them to where they're not hungry at all, then it does better and they're less likely to bite and chew on each other. But if you don't keep food around enough, then that, that unfortunately happens a lot more than I would like to. <laughs> like to admit and like to say that I see and it's sad because there's nothing I can really do about it you know it's not something I have a lot of say over or control over because you know I can't police everybody's house and not everybody's gonna watch this video or look up a training kit or talk to their breeder before deciding to breed themselves and and or taking a bunch of hatchlings and then underfeed them and they start chewing on each other and it's just not good um, another thing, issue number three, that <laughs> I see um, very, very often that's super easy to fix is not handling at all when your animal is young, especially snakes, or overhandling when your snakes are too young. And that is your... I feed my corn snakes twice a week when they're hatchlings. That's just what I do. Um, it works better for me. They react better. It's just how it is. That's what I do. You don't have to do it. You can do it once a week. You can do it once every 10 days. They just, my king snakes and corn snakes, I feed twice a week. And when they're babies, then I want to give them 48 hours between those feedings to let them digest so they don't regurgitate, get stressed out, everything else. So it's, I have to be very careful to only hold them on the days in between. So it gives me about two days a week where I can really handle them because it'll be, let's say I'll feed them every four days to be fair, which is about what I'm doing now. So that gives me feed them, give them two days after that. Then I have about a day and a half where I can hold them, handle them. Then it's feeding them again, giving them those days. And then I have a day and a half where I can do it. That's just how it works out for, for me. It is very important that in that day and a half you handle them, you get them used to people so they're not scared. That way if something happens where you have to quick move one, um, they don't regurgitate their meals, something doesn't go wrong, they don't get snappy or whatever else. Um, it's just really important and so many people see like a, a baby snake snap or strike out and they're like, oh my god, he's aggressive. Snakes aren't aggressive. They're just not, especially hatchlings. Yes, some abuse snakes that are older can be defensive because they're used to getting hurt or they have not been handled at all so it's a defense mechanism but they're not aggressive they're not mean they're not trying to hurt you so it's important to if you see your snake rushing or being snappy to just stay very calm as they sense that they feel your energy stay calm take a deep breath and hold your snake through it get them calm get them to calm down and then put them back and only hold them on the days that they're not eating and you've given them at least 30 hours after eating of not being handled. I like to do 48. But please just be very careful with that. So that's that's number three for me. Also, with the baby ball pythons, they can seem striky or nervous and everything along those lines. That doesn't mean that they are a bad animal. That doesn't mean that they are something that's, you know, someone who's going to hurt you or try to hurt you or whatever else. It just means that they're simply young and inexperienced and not handled enough yet. And so, you know, you're a big scary person and they don't know what on earth you're gonna do to them. You could be the biggest, meanest predator in the world for all they know, and they don't want to get hurt. So they're not trying to be mean. They're not aggressive by nature or inherently. They're just trying to defend themselves and not die as we would if we saw someone scary and larger than us following us. 
we would do the same thing. We would try to protect ourselves and try to be sure we were safe and sane and, you know, we would be defensive if someone came at us. And that's, once they learn that you're not dangerous, that goes away. But you've got to teach them that it's not dangerous. So issue four, right after that is also with ball python babies. It's most of them will not, first of all, these big name pet shops try to feed frozen thawed pinkies. A hatchling ball python should be eating something larger than a pinky mouse. It's a fact. It's true. They should. That's too small. And from breeding for a long time now, and rescuing a lot of near-death ball python babies that people got from big name stores, 9 of 10 won't eat frozen thawed as hatchlings. Yes, an adult ball python or even a juvenile that's a little older, they can eat frozen thawed. It's, it is safer, yes. But when they're babies, if you watch them while they're eating, and if it's a hopper mouse or a pinky rat, the danger is much lower. They're not going to kill your snake. And you can watch and be sure, you know, that everything's going fine and being safe. Whereas like corn snakes, king snakes, a frozen thawed pinky, they eat that very, very, very nicely. For me at least, I've only seen one king snake that um, is a banana milk king snake. He's actually one of my breeders now and he wouldn't eat and was starving himself. So I fed live pinkies to him and live fuzzies at first and he was fine. But everybody else, other than ball pythons, it normally does pretty good with frozen thawed. Um, I've had some issues with hog noses as well, or seen some issues where you need to do live first. But if, as long as you're there, you watch them, you never leave it unsupervised, it's okay. So don't get a hatchling or a young ball python and expect it to eat frozen thawed because it's really, really unlikely. That's just, that's just fact. It's not to be mean. I'm not saying that feeding one way is better than the other, and I'm not saying you can't switch it when they're older, but they know, most likely are gonna starve themselves to death. If, and it's not that they're anorexic, as I've heard from a lot of big name people. It's just, they just don't like to eat it. It's not natural in their instincts for them. So please, please, Keep note of how your animal is reacting and everything along those lines. It's very important. And the number one thing that I see is not having a heat source that's correct for your animal. Snakes are very sensitive. They don't need a heat light above them. They do good with a mat and a thermostat. I'll even put two mats on for a very big tank or a tank that's larger and I'll have a cold side and a hot side and have things very well managed and monitored but it doesn't work well at all if you sit there and don't have a heat mat and heat source whereas a bearded dragon they need a light it's good for their bones they need a bright nice and a nice uv rays on them so it's very important to know what light source and heat source that your animal needs because they don't all need a bright light fixture and they definitely don't all need heat mats it's very specific and make sure to get a thermostat with your heat mats well, I love you guys. Please take care. I will update you on a ball python morph, morph video soon. I love you guys. I will talk to you soon. And a mental health video is coming up very shortly. Bye, guys.